Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8:12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. We're going to do the day of the Lord. Turn your King James Bibles to the book of Joel, chapter 1. And verse 1, this is going to be part number 8. Joel is an interesting book. It's one of the minor prophets. It's called Minor not because of the importance of its message, but rather due to the size. It's minor in size as opposed to the books of Isaiah, Jeremiah, and what have you. Some of the old minor prophets are only one page long. And if you don't know where the book of Joel is, well, go to Math, the book of Matthew in the New Testament and then flip back towards the Old Testament. It's that little tiny section just before you get to the New Testament. All right, the word of the Lord that came to Joel, or Joel, the son of Bethuel. A lot of people don't know it, but L is sometimes it's it refers to the Lord. So his name has a very special meaning. A lot of the Old Testament names have meanings. Joel means either Jehovah is God or Yahweh is God, depending upon who you talk to, but the Lord has many different names. So, all right, verse 2. Hear this, ye old men, and give ear. That's me. All ye inhabitants of the land, hath this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers? Tell ye your children of it, and let your children tell, tell their children, and their children another generation. That which the palmer worm hath left, the locust eaten, had hath the locust eaten. And that which the locust, locust hath left, the canker worm eaten. And that which the canker worm hath left, the cal hath the caterpillar eaten. You know, this reminds me of the plagues of Egypt. You know, they had the locusts come in, and, and I'm telling you, when the locusts come in, there's not much left. I mean, the tr trees are barren. So here you had palmer worms ate their fill. Then the locusts came and ate their fill. And then what little was left, the canker worms ate. And then what was left of that, the caterpillars eat. And you know what's left? Nothing. It says, awake ye drunkards. Boy, that's America today, isn't it? Awake ye drunkards and weep and howl, all ye drinkers of wine, because of the new wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. What is new wine? It's the, the, it's the grapes of this year's harvest. That's the new wine. And it says it is cut off from your mouth. In other words, it was devoured. The worms and the locusts ate it all. Verse 6. For a nation is come up upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he hath the cheek teeth of a great lion. He hath laid my vine waste. Now I did an entire Bible study on the fig tree and the vine. The fig tree, and it was not that long ago that I did this Bible study. So if you Take a look, you'll, you'll find it. Uh, go to the search bar on my channel and type in fig tree. There's a whole playlist on it, actually. But the fig tree is representative of the tribe of Judah. And the vine is Israel. Now, Judah is part of Israel. But not all of Israel is Judah. I mean, Israel was 12 tribes. 
Judah was only one tribe. Judah was the tribe of the kings. Uh, the Levites were the tribe of the priests. So King David was of the tribe of Judah. Jesus was of the tribe of Judah, the king, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Moses and Aaron and Samuel were of the tribe of Levi. They were the ones that served the Lord in doing the sacrifices. And you didn't want to mix the two up. If King David would have went in into the Holy of Holies on the Day of Atonement and tried to offer a blood sacrifice, God would have killed him. As much as the Lord loved King David, because it was not allowed. Period. There's a difference. There was a, a division of powers. You had the those that served the Lord in the temple, the reading of the law, and then you had the king who carried out the law. Okay? So here it is in verse 6. It says, For a nation has come upon my land, strong without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he hath cheek teeth of a great lion. Now, there's not many there's not many things that could stand up against a lion. Let's face it. And it says, He who, the, this nation that came up upon my land, strong without number, he hath laid my vine waste, that's Israel, and barked my fig tree. Hmm. He hath made it clean bare and cast it away. The branches thereof are made white. Well, branches are not supposed to be white. They're supposed to be brown. What does it mean when you bark a tree? Well, I'm no botanist, but I know this. If you remove all the bark, the bark is like on a tree is just like our skin. It protects what's underneath the bark. And if you remove all the bark, then the insects can easily get to it and it can dry it dries out and dies so when you remove all the bark off a tree it's dead it'll die it might not it might live for a little while but it ain't going to live for long so this nation this this nation that the lord sent as a judgment from him he hath laid my vine israel waste and barked my fig tree, Judah. He hath made it clean bare and cast it away. The branches thereof are made white. Lament like a virgin girded with a sackcloth for the husband of her youth. The meat offering and the drink offering is cut off from the house of the Lord. The temple sacrifices are no longer being done. The priests, the Lord's ministers, mourn. The field is wasted, the land mourneth, for the corn is wasted, the new wine is dried up, the oil languisheth. Be ye ashamed, O ye husbandmen, howl, O ye vine dressers, for the wheat, for the barley, because the harvest of the field is perished. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. The harvest of the field is perished. Verse 12. The vine is dried up and the fig tree languisheth. The pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, and the apple tree, even all the trees of the field are withered because joy is withered away from the sons of men. Gird yourselves and lament, ye priests. Howl, ye ministers of the altar. Come, Lie all night in sackcloth, ye ministers of God, for the meat offering and the drink offering is withholden from the house of your God. Sanctify ye a fast. You know what it means to fast? It means to not eat. And what you're doing, it was a spiritual thing. You were basically withholding something from your body to get closer to the Lord. 
And fasting has a health aspect too. So fasting is actually very beneficial according to a lot of health professionals as it helps clean out toxins from your body. It's sort of like taking out the trash. But there's a spiritual application. Sanctify ye a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God and cry. Cry unto the Lord. Why are you crying unto the Lord? Because destruction came. Judgment from a thrice holy God upon a land and a people of wickedness. Verse 15. Alas for the day, for the day of the Lord. That's what the name of this Bible stu studies are, day of the Lord. Alas for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand and as a destruction from the Almighty shall it come. Ooh, let's read that again. Alas for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand and as a destruction from the Almighty shall it come. Is not the meat cut off before our eyes? Yea, joy and gladness from the house of our God. The seed is rotten under their clods. And I tell you what, if you're a farmer and the seed's rotten, you ain't going to have no crops that year because they ain't going to sprout, they ain't going to grow, and you're going to starve or you're going to go hungry. The seed is rotten under their clods. The garners are laid desolate. The barns are broken down for the corn is withered. How do the beasts groan? The herds of cattle are perplexed because they have no pasture. Yea, the flocks of sheep are made desolate. In other words, they all died. O Lord, to thee will I cry, for the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness, and the flame hath burned all the trees of the field. Well, guess what? This makes it sound like there's a bad drought. Because, let's face it, you don't have water, nothing grows, and when everything dries out and there's a fire, it burns everything. And if you don't believe it, ask California how those forest fires are going for them. They've had a severe drought. Verse 20, The beasts of the field cry also unto thee, for the rivers of waters are dried up, and the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness. For the rivers of waters are dried up. Why? Because there's a drought. And the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness. Oh boy. All right, back to verse 11. Be ye ashamed, O ye husbandmen, howl, O ye vine dressers, for the wheat and for the barley, because the harvest of the field is perished. Well, you know, Sometimes there's a twofold application. The crops failed. We get it. There's nothing the the wheat and the barley wouldn't grow. There's no there's no rain, there's no water. But sometimes well, you know, that's what Christ did with his parables. He would show tell a story that was an earthly example but had a heavenly application and the harvest is one of those let's take a look well let's take a look Matthew chapter 9 verse 35 and Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Hmm. Jesus, did you know Jesus was preaching the gospel of the kingdom? And yet there's people that will tell you that you couldn't preach the gospel of the kingdom until after Jesus had been crucified, died, and resurrected. But here it is, it says that Jesus is preaching the gospel of the kingdom. That's interesting. 
and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Now, they're not talking about harvesting wheat or barley or rye. They're talking about preaching the gospel of the kingdom and the multitudes. That's the harvest. But they need laborers. He said, pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Very important. Let's take a look at uh, Matthew 13. Now, Matthew 13 is a very, very interesting chapter. And we're going to take a look. I did an entire Bible study on this, but we're just going to go through it real quick. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's read the whole chapter. Yeah, it's only been a little while. So Matthew chapter 13, verse 1. The same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside. And great multitudes were gathered together unto him. There's those multitudes again. So that he went into a sh ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. Huh. Isn't that interesting? Jesus is preaching unto a, a huge multitude, and he had to get into a ship because there was no room on the seashore for him. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. Okay, what's a sower? Uh, it's a farmer. He's laying, passing out seeds. And when he seed, when he and when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places, where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Now here's something interesting, verse 10 and 11. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? In other words, why do you preach in these veiled stories. You know, what are you, you know, why, why are you doing this? Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Now this is Jesus getting ready to talk, right? He answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, it is not given. What? Is Jesus hiding the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven from the multitude? That's what I get out of it. Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing, see not. What does that mean? It means they got eyes to see, but they don't know what they're, they don't understand what they're seeing. Because they seeing, see not, and hearing, they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Esaias. 
which saying, which saith. And this is, uh, I believe that's Isaiah, the Greek rendering of Isaiah. Which saith, by hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand. And seeing ye shall see and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their hearts and should be converted, and I should heal them. You see, people, our sins separate us from God. When you want God more than anything else in the world, more than your sin or anything else, and you seek him with all your heart, you'll find him. He'll find you. But why did these people follow Christ? Did he, they follow him for the fishes and loaves, the miracles? Did they want to see a magic show? Were they he, following him because they wanted to be healed of diseases? Or did they want to hear the things of God? For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, God's, uh, Jesus speaking to the disciples, but blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears for they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. And you know, people, I'm telling you what, that's going to be, this is going to be fulfilled when all the pre-trib rapture church goers finally understand that they're, they're going to have to probably suffer and die for their faith in Christ or deny him. And Jesus said, if you deny me before men, that I will deny you before the Father and his angels. Now, I might be paraphrasing that, but that's, that's it in a nutshell. If you deny Christ to save your life, what can I tell you? You've been warned. Yet hath he not rooted in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because, ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. Oh, yeah, you think all these people on TBN, send God a donation, blessed Jesus, uh, send us a donation, God will bless you tenfold. Uh, you think those people send money to these TBN preachers with their Learjets because they love God? No, they want a blessing. That's ex They're greedy, they're selfish. If, if TBN taught people that they were going to have to probably die for their faith just like they did. Ten of the twelve apostles died for their faith. Stephen died for their faith. Millions of Christians in history have died for their faith. You think you think they would stick around? No, the, the churches would be empty. TBN's uh, money coffers would dry up and they'd go off the air. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. 
He also that receiveth seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the care of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. But he that receiveth seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word, and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit, and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. You see, we're supposed to bear fruit. And if you don't believe me, read James chapter 2. Fruit is proof of our faith. We're not saved by our works or our fruit. That's not what saves us. But when you are saved, you will bear fruit. That's just the way it is. All right, let's keep going. Verse 24. Now, I did an entire Bible study on this parable, the wheat and the tares. And if you want to go into more detail, we can do it. You can uh, go listen to it. I think it's an hour long. I'm not sure. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares, or weeds, and sowed tares among the wheat, and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servants said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first, first the tares, and bind them into bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Now this is a very important order. Gather ye together first the tares, the weeds. First the tares get bundled. They get binded into bundles to be burned. First. But gather the wheat into my barn. How is that world going to be destroyed? Fire. All right, let's, uh, all right, let's go verse 36. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. In other words, uh, explain this to us, Jesus. We, we don't quite get it. Verse 37, he answered and said unto them, he that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. Well, Jesus called himself the Son of Man. And in John 1.1, 1, 1, the Bible declares, John declares that Jesus created everything. The heavens, the earth, everything. Jesus created Adam. So, he that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. You want a spiritual application of that, uh, may I suggest you go to my homepage, look up the playlists, and uh, take a look at the angels that sinned playlist. 15 hours or so of explaining this, what happened in Genesis 6. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. 
the harvest. The harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity. Iniquity is sin, people. So the Son of Man, Christ, is going to send his angels. They're going to gather out of the, the kingdom everything that's offensive and all the things that do iniquity and sin and wickedness. Verse 42. And shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous, that's all those in Christ, then shall the righteous shine forth as a sun in the kingdom of their father, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Wow. All right, turn to the book of Revelation, chapter 14 and verse 14. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud. And upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. Well, what, is it, what do they use a sickle for? Uh, har wheat harvest. That's what they use a sickle for. If you don't know what a sickle is, um, look it up. Uh, perhaps you've heard of the Grim Reaper, you know, the modern, you know, the guy, the skeleton dressed in black. And he's got the, and that's a sickle in his hand or whatever, arms, whatever. And I looked to behold a white cloud and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a sharp, uh, I'm sorry, a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, thrust in thy sickle and reap. For the time has come for thee to reap, for the harvest, the harvest of the earth is ripe. For the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire, which had power over fire, which had power over fire and cried with a loud voice. I'm sorry. And cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle saying, thrust in thy sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth for her grapes are fully ripe. The vine and the grapes was indicative of Israel people. I did that in a previous study. Verse 19, And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden without the city and blood came out of the winepress even under the horse's bridles by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. You know, there's going to be those that are saved and there's going to be those that are not. So, all right, well, that is the end of Joel chapter 1, which is lesson number 8. Hopefully, God willing, we'll continue, and uh, I believe it's going to be Joel 2 that we're going to be doing. So, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen.